This meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. Looks like we have a few people still connecting maybe. So is that everyone you think, Kim? Um, they are all in the process of logging in. If you can just maybe just take attendance while we're waiting. Sure, I think we've got everybody tonight except for Claire. Right. I think you're right. So um, for alternates, we have Chris Vasek and Amy. Damian. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm confusing myself now. So um, Damien has already indicated that he does not wish to vote tonight. So, but I will only need one alternate. Let, let Chris have a go at it. So Chris Hall, you're in. Um, I encourage um, our other alternates to participate, please. As always. Mm -hmm. We still have a few more coming in. I'm going to start my, um, my opening remarks. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the October 26, 2021 meeting of the Weathersfield Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been here before, tonight's session is composed of two parts the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public hearing, we each ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us the opportunity to clarify what you are proposing to do and for us to ask any questions. Commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, and in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but you need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow, 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other permits such as zoning, inland wetlands, and building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before you begin your construction. With this, I will ask our clerk, Commissioner Lyons, to read the legal notice. Thank you. Legal notice, Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission. The Weathersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, October 26, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. on the following applications seeking a certificate of appropriateness. Application 6095-21, Natalie Real seeking to install 60 by 62, a removable dock similar in style to the Tonto Weathersfield Cove dock system, extending from rear yard into the Weathersfield Cove at 310 Hartford Ave. Application 6096-21, custom design woodworking, seeking to replace one window on first floor on left side of home with a smaller size Harvey Majesty window at 530 Main Street. Application 6097-21, Olivia Carbone seeking to replace asphalt shingles with galvanized metal on barn roof at 25 Garden Street. Application 6098-21, Dina Dinzak, sorry, seeking to replace six windows in home with Harvey Classic one over one double hung vinyl windows at 65 North Brick Lane. Application 6099-21, Town of Wethersfield seeking to expand the Heritage Way interpretive trail to include five new sign panels, one at Trinity Church, 300 Main Street, one at the southeast corner of Main and Church Street, and three at the Wood Parcel on Middletown Ave. Application 7000-21, Charles Drake Enterprises, LLC, seeking to install a patio, fencing, stone retaining walls, pergola, lighting, and landscaping on left side of building at 161 Main Street. Any residents interested in reviewing an application, speaking on an application, or anyone wishing, wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 4 p.m. on the night of the meeting. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the correspondence. Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated at Weathersfield, Connecticut, this eighth day of October, 2021. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. With that, we've got a couple of holdovers from the last hearing, so we'll jump right in with our first application, 
the application for 241 Middletown Avenue. If you could give your name and address for the record. And can you, can you unmute Alma? Alma, I think is there. Oh yes, hi everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, I was just listening. I was like, am I on the list or not? So hi guys, how's everybody doing tonight? Very good, thank good. you. So you gave us some more information. Tell us about yes. what you'd like to do differently. So I came back last time when I presented my um, case, um, pretty much um, I would like to replace the front two door to uh, be matching also to be um, airproof. I also have tenants. So just want to make sure that, you know, it's appealing and um, also to follow the historic district uh, guidelines. So when I spoke uh, with Kim, I need a little bit more direction. What I presented last time, it seems like it didn't reflect um, the guidelines of the historic district. So I came back with different um, doors options. Um, in my latest attachments, I provided um, pretty much I was told to follow kind of Greek farm style. And um, just a quick summary here. So I grew up in Old Wethersfield and um, I'm a new owner of this property. So I'm learning that um, the style has been changed kind of from Greek to farm. So I was kind of trying to figure out what fits the best. But um, I went back and kind of did some research and presented, put together a couple options for doors if you guys um, have in front of you my latest drop off. So there's um, A, B, C, D, and E. Um, all of them, I would like to keep white. They do have some window um, openings, but also there's um, option E that's just plain white. Thank you for sharing. So um, starting with A, that one seemed to be the most, as they kind of said, farm Greek style. And then there's option B, if we scroll down. Um, I kind of just plugged in, um, type in the re requirement for farm kind of Greek, and that's what came up. So I'm open to, um, those would be the styles that one of those I would prefer, but I kind of want to run this by you guys and see what your opinions are on this. So if you scroll down, so there's option B, um, the window style, um, C as well. And then if we scroll a little bit more down, option D, which is kind of, um, traditional window and then it would be just replacing the, uh, the current door with the same style but we knew it would be um, airproof and kind of reflecting what we have now. So that's for the doors. Uh, should I continue with railings or do we want to? Okay. Well, let's see if anyone has any questions on the doors first. We'll go one thing at a okay. time. Um, I know for me, one the um, big objection I had to the first door that you put forward was that um, the beveled glass and the trimmed out glass. Yeah, that was the option C. Was yeah. not really um, what would replicate what would be an appropriate door there or replicate what you had there. We were looking for something that looked a little more closely like the doors you had. Um, and I understand that you wanted maybe some glass up top if you yeah. could. And I, you know, I wasn't opposed to that. I think the door that you proposed for the rear door for me looked fine um, the first round, but you know, a lot of these proposals again have that trimmed out faux leaded glass sort of look to them. Um, that first one I'm looking at B it's hard to tell what that picture actually shows. I can't tell what I mean, that the is. A. Yeah, so I did, um, I guess when you guys scanned it, um, it's not really reflecting what's in the picture. It's, it's a glass door, but it doesn't have any black rims, um, frames. So it's, it's, it's settled, but it still has a little bit character. So I think that would fit nicely, but um, unfortunately this copy that's being presented right now is not um, justifying what it actually looks. Um, so that's the A, the top two would be the A and I, I did provide um, a sample how it looks, but it's, in, it's not really reflecting um, what I have in front of me right now. What's the, uh, 
You have the, the make? Do we have the make of what the door is? That one's, they look like the first two are Thermatru. Yeah, the, yeah, first two is the same kind, just um, one was just um, a sample of how it looks in you know, an actual property when it's put in. I, so have it's the, a, yeah. I have the original in my hand. Oh, you it, do? It is still, um, that A is very washed out. It's very hard to see. Okay. In any event, for me, um, you know, mm -hmm. D, the panel door with a light on top would be appropriate, but I'm not a fan of that half moon look really. You know, I think a couple of square lights would be nice, but um, for me, I think E would be my choice. I don't know what other people think if that's a door that you like. Can we scroll down to E? It's just simple white that I already have. Well, no windows. It's a six panel door. Yeah. So it's a six panel door that would be perfectly appropriate for that spot. And then the back door you had proposed earlier in our packet. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm flipping back in my own packet. Um, a door, a six light door with two lower panels, um, which is a little bit more modern look than the one you have, but I think does a fine job for okay. what you looking at. Does anyone else have any thoughts on the doors? My only thought on the doors is uh, that of the five doors that are presented, uh, the first one is fiberglass, the rest are steel. Has And seeing as there's not much difference in price between steel and fiberglass doors, I think I would have a preference uh, to a fiberglass door simply because the the details of the raised panels tend to be much crisper and come much closer to replicating a wood door than the steel does. The steel has very soft uh, molding simply because they can't stamp it really tight. So it seems like it's um, it's, a, it's between, I, am I correctly understanding between door A and possibly E without the uh, window? I, are we narrowing down to those two or are we just um well i'm just i'm just asking about uh i mean i'm suggesting that mm -hmm. a fiberglass door regardless of the pattern is going to come across looking much more appropriate than a steel door okay um, now having having said that you know um the house has had an awful lot of modifications yeah. to it from its original. Do you have a first choice for which door you like best? Um, at this point, um, probably A, right? I, a, I like A because um, it gives a window, but it's still, it's still settled. It's not like um, option B or C really popping out. I did try to find something um, like D that's just uh, not half moon. It's more just open to kind of square windows, but um, I couldn't find anything in the budget I was looking for. So what was within my budget, um, this is what I chose. Of course, the, there were different doors, but that was over the budget I was looking for to invest. So um, A probably would be my preference at this point. Um, C was okay too, but I know C last time it was um, not rejected. So E would be okay too, just kind of keep it the way it is at this point. And it's the lowest cost, so I'm okay with that too at this point. I guess the question uh, that I have is E, yeah, because E does kind of replicate other than as Vasek said, it's steel. Does that come in fiberglass? Yes. Oh, he does? I would imagine. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm not sure from the same manufacturer, but. Yeah, uh, it's a. Yeah. All yeah. Okay. Are you trying to get light in that space? Is that a foyer yeah. or entrance? Yeah. That's yeah, that's what I wanted, just a little bit more light. And um, so a window that's not completely, you can see everything uh, would be great just to add a little bit more sun. Like in the morning, there's so much sun and it would be great to add some light. So that's initially what I wanted to go with. But um, at this point, I just want a new door. <laughs> Alma, did you look at ND in that option set of the half moon? Did you find something that had a rectangular square type? I was looking, but like I said, uh, within my budget, I couldn't find anything um, rectangular. Like my my parents also live in Old Weather, so they have this beautiful door, which is two rect rectangulars, and it was 
it looks amazing. I couldn't find it anywhere. So I don't know if it's um, not at least within my budget. So the one we have of A that you that you like, and that's a, I can't even tell the light pattern in that. Is that? So I, I Googled it. It kind of, it's kind of like a, oh, good. a funky lighting pattern. It's not a, a, a traditional style where it's just kind of, you know, six light over the top or, or four light or whatever the case may be. Um, it's kind of, uh, I don't know. It, it's, it's tough to tell from, from the internet, but it looks like it's got sort of like this leaded glass kind of texture to it. Uh, is it clear thing. or is it, is it kind of? No, like, no. Now those panels, it looks like they're just lines on the definition, but, and when it looks like it's installed there, those are two vertical long rectangular panels. So that's, yeah, when I, so as we try to narrow down um, my search for what door would qualify, I need guidelines. So when I typed in farm style in Greek, that kind of popped up. Um, so I guess two panels versus six. Yeah, that's definitely a craftsman look door. Yeah, and I was going to say, <laughs> did you spell it right? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Google, that's yeah. what kept <laughs> popping up. I, so I'm not sure if it's, you know, sometimes they categorize um, one style into a couple of those, but yeah. Yeah. And I can see why would they suggest to be a farm style because of the one square window. And so um, if you look for farm, it's mostly like almost like a barn kind of style with one um, window in the middle. But yeah, so open for suggestions or voting. Now, I wasn't at the previous meeting. So if we could go back quickly, the back door you're asking. Kim, did you have, did you, could you pull those up? I'm sorry. It was a, um, was a in your yeah. hand. Hold, hang on. I see the one. Okay. I, I do see it here. It's page nine of our 122 there. I have the other door up here. Let me bring it up. It's nine like two panel. Oh, thanks. There it is. Well, that's, that's the front doors. Yeah. This just looks like it's kind of beveled there that it has. Yeah. I'm sorry, Chris, which did you That's want? That's okay, the, the back door. It looks like it back door replacement. You haven't changed on that. That's the, it has the vertical uh, S All right. divides. Mm -hmm. And now this is a uh, nine light window or door. Is that the one? That's what's being proposed. Mm -hmm. That's what's yeah. being proposed. Okay, yeah, thank yep. you. Can we talk about the railings a bit? Yeah, yeah, let's go into that. So, um, if we, um, I'm not sure if you guys have in front of you, but pretty much um, I'm asking to replace the, let me see. Yeah, the front door um, railings. As you can see, um, there's none. And also um, I have tenants. So uh, this is multifamily property and uh, kids and for just safety proof. So last time when I came, I proposed um, composite. And then, um, yeah, and in the back, definitely I need to replace those as well as this is not sturdy at all. And it's just um, it's being replaced with a random piece of wood. Um, so yeah, propose, I also put options A, B, C, D, and E and F because um, um, I kind of wanted to walk away out of this meeting with having one option so I can proceed with this. Um, a, I think was just um, composite that we look A and B, so just kind of the style is pretty much what you guys see here, picture A to the left and picture B to the right. And then I was asked to go and look for different material options. So within a budget, a budget vinyl stereo kit um, would be the next one. And same, that's C. Um, the upper two white ones are option C, and then option D is just um, different coloring, but um, and a little bit of a different kind of style. And then um, I went to look for option E, which is um, aluminum material. And let's see, and that's it. And one more for F, which is also aluminum.
So those are the options uh, when it came to material composite versus vinyl versus an aluminum. Okay. Is that, you're just proposing that in black or they're both in black or all these are white? I think they were just, they came out um, in, actually, yeah, that was black, but um, detention pro, yeah. What's your preference? Um, what, what are you asking? Um, I'm asking, um, probably go with white, maybe white with, um, probably, um, let me see. My preference would be probably D or E, which is um, the vinyl. Uh, my bad, C and D. Um, C is the vinyl stereo kit, all white, or D, the white with black inside, just to add a little bit of pop color because the whole house is painted in white. And um, the entrance, everything was painted in white, the doorknobs, the stairs, the side of the house. So um, to add just a little bit of color, but at this point, either keep it white. I think um, if I keep it white, it will still give it a little bit more character and or the option D. This is just one horizontal piece across the front porch, right? Yes. Okay. Nothing additional. Okay. And I would apply the same one in the back. So um, mm -hmm. for safety reasons as well. Was wood ever considered? Yes, um, I took a look, but that's, um, I couldn't find much. And also it's, I would have to have somebody guess, get it custom made. So that would definitely go over my budget than um, what's available right now. Also from learning, I guess vinyl is most durable one. Actually our experience is um, the opposite of that because the vinyl tends to be a hollow product. Um, yeah. And so right, it it's like a veneer. A lot, a lot less durable, actually. Okay. Sometimes there's wood under it, like a veneer, too, but it does tend to turn. I've seen projects where they removed it because it turns brittle and powdery if it's in the sun all the time. But that's just, that's not universal, but that's what I have seen that sometimes. So I don't know if you researched that at all. And not really. Is it across a couple of years, or are we talking like a couple of years or like 10 years? Something yeah, seven that... to 10. Seven to ten. Okay. The only thing I would add with rentals is, you know, when tenants are moving in and out, they're a little bit more, the vinyl's a little more fragile than wood is. Right, you can touch up wood, paint it, fill it in, whatever, much easier. Yep. Yeah. Now that said, we also have a house that's been wrapped and the windows have been changed already, et cetera. Does anyone else have any question, other questions for this applicant or any other um, thoughts they wanna share on the options? No. Nothing. Okay, hearing further, do you have any other questions for us? No, um, not at this point. Okay. Thank you very much for coming back. Uh, is there anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? You can hit your little raise hand button um, and Kim will see you and let you comment. Hearing none, we'll move on to application 6087, the application for 183 Church Street. Hi, how is everybody tonight? Hi, good, thanks. Good, Can you yourself? name and address for our record, please? Sherry Jackson. And you're the homeowner at 183 Church. Correct. Perfect. So you were here last and we talked about maybe looking at some other options um, that were not an all vinyl product and then also for replicating the setup of the windows instead of three double hungs across the front. Um, what do you have for us today? So uh, I looked into having the wood windows restored. I actually didn't even know that was an option. I love the idea. Uh, and doing my research, there aren't a lot of companies in Connecticut that currently do it. I did speak to the owner of Bioglass that used to be out of uh, Newington. They've been purchased out of, by another family. 
And he said he quoted me pricing, which was outrageous and uh, 18 month lead time. So although it was a great idea and I would love to keep the wooden windows, uh, it's just not an option for me. I mean, it was about $1,500 a window, honestly. Christine. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's sad because it's a great idea. I never even knew you could do that. Now that was for the buy glass. Um, what other sort of repair repairs are necessary on them? They need to be completely removed, fully restored. It's a very intense process. And so we're here with the same product that you had last time with the yep. grill between the glass. Um, with no grills between the glass, my current windows don't have that. I'm not sure where that was put in the application because I know I didn't put it down. It looks, um, but it looks I like did you have two over two though. So are you proposing no light divisions at all? I'm just want to replace my current windows, which I'm, yeah, I guess. So well, your current windows have each the top and the lower have one divider in them. So you have four panes of glass. Is that right? Um, honestly, let me look. I'm looking at the picture. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. And so you're, are you proposing to replicate that layout with the two over two? As close to what um, I currently have, I don't, you know, I didn't even get into detail. I know my window company is on the meeting tonight and they can talk about that more. Okay. Over Maybe they can help us. Yeah. Yes, we could we could absolutely duplicate can you, that. Um can you give my your name's Danny. Name, sir, can you give your name and your business address for the yes. record? My name's Danny Rosa, Finestra, 485 New Park Avenue, West Hartford, Connecticut. And we could absolutely duplicate that. Um that horizontal line in our windows. And we, we've done that in the past for other historic home projects. And would that be uh, between the glass or fixed on the glass on both sides with a spacer in between? Uh, no, we, um, we could do both. However, uh, considering that style house in that era, I, um, I believe that a, a grid between the glass would be fine. Uh, it actually would not be fine for most of us. Uh, I don't want to speak for everyone. Um, and that's why I'm asking, or do you have the ability to do inside, outside, and a spacer in between? Or is that something that can't be done with this product? No, we can do that with that product. That's, that's called the simulated divided light. And we could absolutely do that with that product. And it's a full vinyl window, is that correct? Correct. So does that, how cost effective is that? I mean, does that increase the pricing? Cause that, you know, budget wise, it matters. And he doesn't want to speak to it. Mm -hmm. Excuse me? We, yeah. we have no idea that we don't regulate a uh, cost. We can only regulate what it looks like. Right, but when it comes down to it, I mean, have you approved other vinyl windows within Old Weathersfield that it's in between? Um, no. Well, yes, but not for quite a while. Uh, the beauty of it is the window manufacturers come up with new products, tend to, years ago, there was only grills between the glass and that was the best solution that we could find. As time has gone by, the window manufacturers have figured out how to do the grills on both sides of the glass. Mm -hmm. And that comes closer to replicating what you're proposing to remove. So does that answer the question? I guess. I mean, how about the elements, the weather? I mean, does it affect now I'm, I'm taking a window, which I'm hoping to update to make mm -hmm. it you know, just generally more cost effective overall and now I'm having pieces exposed to the you know the sun and the snow and all the storms whereas everything was going to be inside the window and I didn't have to worry about that. Well that's the problem with a full vinyl product it's not as durable as other clad products are. 
But and that, that's part of the reason that um, we have difficulty approving them because we're not approving something that's going to stand the test of time. You know, my windows behind me are a hundred years old and they're, they've probably been painted a couple of times, but that's about it. And you're not gonna get that kind of durability out of a vinyl product. That's just a fact. Right. But well, it sounds like you may have some more discussing to do with your contractor about um, exactly what can be done. You know, your your. So, so I'm, if I'm understanding correctly, um, you get you folks would be fine with a window with SDLs in it, replicating that horizontal okay. line. We're going to talk more about this particular product. Um, I think. Also, you know, what year was that house built in? Is that a pre-war house or a post-war house? I forget. Post-war. Post-war, post-war, like 1945, 1955, 1965. How how far after? Before, before vinyl windows were invented. Um, what year was that house built in? 1956. He said before vinyl windows existed. Okay. What year were vinyl windows uh, invented? It's, it, it, they didn't exist at the time <laughs> this house was built in 1956. But you're, I just, I'm curious because yep. what year were they invented in? I don't, you're, I don't know you're, it's what's not, that? Come on, I'll take you. Cool. <laughs> Hello? That seems like a question that you would be able to answer better than we would be able to answer because as we've said, vinyl windows are generally <clears throat> not approved in the district, um, especially when we're looking for light divisions. Yeah, vinyl windows were invented in 1954 in Germany. Just, just you know, just so you know. Thank you. Okay. Does anyone have any no. other questions for the applicant or the contractor? I'm here. Okay. Um, do we have anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? I do have uh, one comment from Dave Santoro, a neighbor at 187 Church Street. He left a message wishing to speak in favor of the replacement windows at 183 Church Street. Hearing nothing further, we'll move on to application 6091, the application for 59 Church Street. Freeman's yes. uh, address for the record. Sure, Brian Freeman. Jean Freeman. At 59 Church Street. Welcome back. What do you got for us tonight? Um, hopefully folks had a chance to read the uh, summary that was submitted with the application. This concerns uh, an old um, utilitarian chimney, not a, uh, an architectural element. Uh, um, like is sometimes found in houses of this vintage. Uh, suffice to say, the chimney has um, long been out of use. There's a decades long chronic leaking problem that we have tried with multiple contractors, multiple efforts uh, to try to stop the moisture infiltration into the attic. And um, uh, that all those efforts have been um, for naught. We have um, moisture in the attic on structural members. That is not a good thing and the moisture gets into the second floor hallway, um, soaks through the plaster, collapses the ceiling. We've been through two cycles of that. And um, um, I can go into a little, uh, as much or as little as much um, you know, summary as you like of the written summary that I put together if folks hadn't had a chance to look at it. But um, I'd be happy to take your guide and, uh, guidance on that one. I think that everybody's probably um, gone over it thoroughly. We also had a pre-meeting with you where we discussed it. Um, I appreciate all the pictures that you provided um, from the multiple angles and then the samples you know, of other houses that uh, lack that functional chimney as well. Um, what do, do any of our other commissioners have any questions or comments? And actually, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, there was a, a question or a suggestion from the last meeting 
um, by, I believe it was Claire Mead, uh, suggesting that we contact the Connecticut Trust for Historic Preservation, or I forget what they're known as now, you know, the trust or something like that. Um, to, and, and I did that, I spoke with um, one of their historic uh, circuit riders, as they call them, and uh, described the situation. Long story short, he said um, he didn't have anything further he could suggest. He said it sounded like you know, we kind of attacked it from all the angles that he would suggest. And um, um, uh, I just wanted to let you know that we, we had tried that, but that hadn't produced anything beyond what we already had, had tried. I really appreciate that, actually, because in the past, when we've had um, things that are sensitive, like the removal of a chimney, when they're opposed to it, they tend to come out in force. So it's interesting that they didn't um, come tonight or contact any of us to discuss it further. So happy to take any questions um, or spin out any items in the, uh, the summary um, in the application. So, Mr. Freeman, are there any other chimneys on the house at this point? No, this was the only chimney that the house has ever um, had. It, it never had a wooden fireplace, unlike a lot of its peers. That's because you had a modern house. Uh, yeah, it's thoroughly modern. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, it's just a narrow chimney that served a coal-fired boiler. Okay. There's no utilities hooked up that exit out of that chimney now, whether it's a gas furnace or whatnot correct there there had been when we first bought the house but um a dozen years ago 15 years ago we put in uh we replaced that furnace with a side venting boiler and um that chimney is is just uh it's a it's uh defunct thanks I have no other questions. Thank you, Sarah. I was just taking a couple notes. I agree. Um, does anyone else have any other questions or comments that they'd like to offer now at this time? Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Freeman, for coming back again. Is anyone here from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Sorry, it's just taking us some time to make sure there's no hands raised. Um, with all, we've got a lot of people on tonight. Thank you very much. We'll move on to the next application, which is 6095, the application at 310 Hartford Avenue. Do we have someone, Kim? I'm looking, I don't see anyone. If, you, um, if you're trying to get on, you move your cursor to the bottom of the screen, a list of items will come up and it will give you a raise hand option if you're here for this application. If you can raise your hand because we're not picking you out based on whatever name you have up. Maybe we could go back. Yeah, we'll pass it for now. We'll move on to application 6096, the application for 530 Main Street. How can we have this many people and none of them be on the applications that are up right now? <laughs> Is there someone here for that application? I don't see that one either. Oh, I have a hand. I have a hand. Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm here. My <laughs> mic was uh, muted. It's hard to hear me with my mic muted. Very. Thank you. Can you give your name and address? Yes. Address? yes. My name is Gary Warner. Uh, the address is 95 Minichug Drive in Glastonbury, Connecticut. And uh, my wife and I purchased the property at 530 Main Street. And we are in the process of remodeling so that we can move there. Uh, one of the windows that is facing the street on the side of the house, well, there's, it's an old window. It's uh, some, most of the windows on facing the street and on the side have been replaced, I believe about probably close to eight years ago, maybe a little more. 
very poorly done. They're very poor windows. Uh, they're falling apart, some of them. And, and some won't open, and some that do open won't stay open. So they, they weren't top quality windows. But on our remodeling, the window that I am talking about is on that jut out on the left side of the house. What I was looking to do is number one, I need to replace it. No, just the one facing the street, that one. Mm -hmm. uh, I was looking to replace it. It was doing two things. We're gonna raise the height of that. So the top of the window follows the same height as the main house because it's about eight inches lower. So we were gonna raise that. And we wanted to put a three foot tall by 28 and a half, it's 28 and a half currently wide window. Uh, six over six to, you know, replace the existing one because there's a register, heat register in front of the window on the lower section. So if you look in the window, you're looking at the back of a, of a steam register and we wanted to get up above that register. The, the house originally, as you can see in the attic, were six over six and 12 over 12. What was put in were the two over two, probably around the 1800s. And then the replacements were also put in as two over twos. So all the front windows have been replaced. Uh, they were not Anderson and they are wood on the inside, but they were not Anderson. Uh, I think the town records had what they were. I forget what the name was, but uh, I couldn't find that company anymore. So we are looking at when we replace those windows and we will have to, we would look to like try to put the house back into the period that it was designed for. I mean, I've been for 30 years, I've been restoring houses and post beam and everywhere from Vermont to uh, Maine to some in Connecticut. And I really like the, we were excited about buying this uh, because of, of the historic value of it. So in short, uh, what we're doing is shortening that window to hide the register that was put in front of it. Any questions? Mr. Warren, can you talk about the choice that you're, what, what type of window you're putting in? We're putting in the, the Harvey Majestic. Um, Anderson is now owned by Harvey and most of the major window companies, the ones that do the wood interiors, which is what we want, uh, are, are either owned or they still carry their name, but they're owned by uh, Harvey and the Harvey Majestic, from my experience, is a lot more uh, rugged built, you might say, than I haven't had great luck with Anderson. Maybe it's just me. Uh, but it would certainly be my second choice. Those are the only two that I know of that really have a quality window with a wood interior. So it isn't like there's a lot of options. What is the exterior material on that? It's a vinyl exterior. Vinyl exterior, yeah. And that's what was put in too. And that's okay. It doesn't excite me. I would prefer the wood. Is there a wood window option for that spot um, as a starter to the long-term project? I, I could check if it's available, I would take that. Uh, you know, I'm getting old. I don't really care about doing the painting and the maintenance, but uh, we, could, we can hire that done. You know, again, for the sake of the historic value of it, it would be more fitting to do that. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Warner, I have a question about the. This is a two. This is a double hung window that you're proposing. Yes, it's a double hung. So my one concern is that it's a 36 inch high window. It's going to be mm -hmm. 28 inches wide. Normally, if you look at the windows on the front of your house, look at your neighbor's houses, look at just about any traditional window the sashes tend to be almost square. So that when you stack two of the sashes on top of each other, it's a basically a two to one proportion. However, with a 28 inch wide window, 36 inches high, 
it's going to look yeah. horizontal. Yes, yeah, I agree. My, uh, my concern is not as much as the sashes not being horizontal, but did you get good, accurate drawings from the uh, people that you're proposing to buy this from to make sure that the panes of glass are vertical rather than horizontal? Because if they're horizontal, it will look very, very awkward, as I'm sure you know. Yes, uh, I've done the drawings and I have also seen the drawings that the manufacturer has, the brochure. And I believe I gave you, provided a copy of the brochure. But what I'm looking at putting in is six over six. And that makes about a 5.4 inch wide by seven something inch tall pane. And there would be 12 of them total. So they would be, you know, what you're referring to as vertical. Mr. Warner, if you have seven inch tall panes, yeah, you're, you're good, Never mind. I did my math wrong. Uh, yeah, that, no, that would work. Thank you. Okay, does anyone else have any other questions? So that's what that looks like with snow, huh? <laughs> I'll know soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did we specify a color? I'm sure. I'm um, sorry. White exterior, as the Thank windows you. are. Thought so. Yes. Yep. So the pane on the right is a six over six that I was recommending. And that's wood inside, vinyl outside. Pardon? And in the light division, um, if you don't decide to look for a wood product instead, you know, in light of what you think you're going to do with the rest of the house, um, that we would, would definitely we, we definitely do wood if we can. I'll check with them and see if they can get wood both front in and out. Okay. It's getting hard to find those. And, and so the only reason you want to shrink the windows is because of the, the eye line is cut off by the. In interior heater yeah anyway yeah the heat register is right in front of the window been there for years but it annoyed me and, and it also annoyed me the fact that all the windows in that 1800 edition on the house uh, are all eight inches lower than the ones on the main house how difficult would it have been to make them the same and is it very close to the window or could it be not seen from the outside if there was a curtain or? Oh, it's two inches from the window. It's just away from the wall enough for the heat. Gotcha. Can we just clarify that it's not, maybe not vinyl on the outside, maybe aluminum? Cut it could it? be. Because that's what the- I'm, I'm just, I'm just seeing that now. Yeah, I was surprised to see when I, when you said um, vinyl because the, um, Submissions, yeah. but they do have a vinyl clad window. So I would go aluminum before vinyl. That's, that's my that's my impression. I don't. But I'll their slim you line. And... Their slim line is vinyl. The Majesty is the aluminum. Oh, Majesty would be aluminum then. Yeah. I think I think if um, you want to take it, you know, if there's no big rush and you want. Well, there is. You know, we want to move in by the November 21 is when we were supposed to be moving in and we're going through the remodeling now. So this isn't something that, you know, I've got the permit in for the three season porch. I put that in through Kim, but it, because it's on the back, uh, it's replacing a rotted deck. Uh, that was Kim. That can't be seen from any public way. So we didn't need to see that. Yeah. So then I'm going, you know, it's in the building department and now it's in wetland and, you know, we're really trying to, because the house we're in is being sold and we need to move and we're looking to right. get moved in as soon as we can. For, for me, the, um, I was thinking to give you an opportunity because your long range plan is to read you all the windows to give you two weeks to look and see if they have it in a wood window or perhaps another manufacturer has a wood window. It won't take me two weeks. I'll take as a phone call tomorrow. You know, so I'm really, I don't mean to rush you, but I, we really need a place to live. Uh, we're going to have to move out of the house that we're in. 
uh, and we were hoping that we could get in, but the, you know, it's just time consuming for the permits as much as any, we have the permit for the remodel of the interior and that's progressing. Uh, the electrical permit, still trying to decide on a plumber. Well, not decide on one, still trying to find one that'll answer their phone. Uh, but the, you know, it's just, we're real tight on time. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions for this applicant? No. Um, anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Yeah, you know, I, I, would, I would like to say one other thing. Sure. If if the uh, if the feeling is that it has to be wood, and and if you approve it under the stipulation that if it's wood, then you would approve it. Or if you don't take the contingency of the aluminum, then I would only go with wood if I can get wood. I don't know what I'm going to do about the window. The window needs to be replaced. Even if I put in the same size window, I've got to replace the window. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, hearing no comments from the public, I'll move on to application 6097, the application at 25 Garden. Is anyone here for that, Kim? I saw him earlier. Hello, sorry. hello, I'm sorry about oh, that. There you go. I see it. Sorry about that. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, welcome. Name Thank and you. address for the record. Uh, Vincent and Olivia Carbone, 25 Garden Street, Weathersfield. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks for coming in. Um, I appreciate the details. I think everybody has probably seen it. Do you have anything else you'd like to add um, about what you have put up on your roof? No, no, I think you guys are, were pretty clear on everything and uh, um, hope you guys like it. It's, um, you know, it's a Drexel metal roof, uh, model DMC 450 standing seam roof system. So we're just seeking the certificate of appropriateness from you. Great. Does anyone have any questions for the applicant? I was wondering if there were going to be any snowbirds on the roof to break up the ice. Haven't thought about that yet. Yeah, it's been my experience that if you don't have them, it just comes off in sheets when it starts to melt. Awesome, that's good to know. It could be done. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Thanks very much for coming in, folks. Um, is there anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to application 6098-65 North Brick Lane. Hi. Welcome. Hi, my name is Dina. I'm at 65 North Brick Lane. Um, I've been here for two years now. Um, and my house was built, I believe it was 1963 or four. I'm not sure 100%, um, but I, I would like to replace six of my windows. Um, I selected the Harvey window, specifically the classic, um, since it uh, appears to um, have been around for many years. And it appears the, neighbor, the neighbors um, use the same windows as well. Um, so um, my contractor is Mike Violet. Violet, and he's on here as well, then he can answer any questions. This is not a clad window. Again, it's a straight vinyl window. Yeah, yes. it's a, yeah, go ahead. So what we, you, we, we tried to, um, division. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we, we tried to pick a vinyl window that replicates the same look as what she has there now. And that's, we came up with the classic 
Um, it is an all vinyl window outside and in. Um, the old uh, windows um, do not have any grids. So there's no grids in the classic. Same size, it's a replacement. Uh, we're not touched. We wouldn't touch the exterior casing trim or the shutters. So it would be an inside install, take the window out, put the new one in. The frame of it is very similar to the frame of the existing wood uh, window that's there now, the double hung. Um, Mr. Violet, could you give your name and business the address for the record, please? Sure. Mike Violet, Violet Restorations, 15 Bob White Hill, Weathersfield. Thank you. You're welcome. And Mr. Violet, the, yeah. the window frames that are going in, what is the, the thickness of it? So side to side. The thickness, you mean the depth, like three and a quarter inches? No, like the inch and a half or whatever it is from yeah. the it's, existing frame to where the sash is. It's pretty close. I didn't measure it, but the sides are, I would say like, a, uh, the sashes are like an inch and a quarter. Um, and then the bottom is the bottom part of the frame is like two inches. Okay. And they look very, very similar. I don't know the exact measurements, but they look, um, you know, very similar to, I have a picture here of the house, but yeah, it's, it's just, uh, so let, let me try my question again. Cause I guess it didn't work. The box that your windows, your sash is sitting. Yep. It's basically a box that slides in, right? So it's a frame and the, and the sashes are within the frame. Yeah. That frame. Yeah. On each side, how thick is it? I would say it's, it's uh, probably an inch and a half, but most of it gets covered behind the, the blind course. stop. Of course. Yeah. So an inch and a half on each side and two inches on the bottom yep. and, and another inch and a half on top, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Can you guys identify, and we identify bathroom, bedroom, 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 from the, uh, can you point out which windows we're talking, I figured that one, yeah. That one, yeah. The, one the, the next. That one. one's the bed, that's the bedroom where you were earlier. The exterior, yep, to the left. Bedroom, that's another bedroom. Okay, so that's two. And then in the back of the home. Nothing is, with their bay window. The right. bay window is not being touched. Where are the other two? The other two are in the backyard. If you go to the back. Okay, so we don't see that. We can't see them. So those so, casements are staying. So it's really those two front windows. So the two front windows, yep. And then the back and the side, yep. Which we cannot see from the road. The, right. Yeah. Public view. Yeah, and they're all double hungs, no, no casements. Right. Yeah. So it's those really to the public view are these two windows here above the garage and close to the front door. Yes. Thank you. And nothing on the side of the house. Yep. There's some on the sides. Yeah. On the side gables and in the rear of the house too. The windows. Yeah. Are you replacing these on the left side to the gate, the gable end? Yes. All right. So that's not what you just said. So <laughs> Well, I, I thought you meant just the front wall. We're looking at what public view. And so I'm asking you of all that you identified, you identified the two in the front and now you're saying to with the garage side, the left-hand side, that gable end, those two there as well. So, so you can see those. Yeah, the yeah I, I misunderstood. The, the house, no worries. Is, you know, there's only eight windows on the whole house. So six of them are getting replaced. So there, you know, there's- So there's uh, the four, where's, where's the other not? two? The other two are in the back. So we can't see those. Is that you understand right. that we got? And that. there's Thank one you. more. And there's one more on the other the, the chimney side. Can we show that? Right. Is that it's visible? Yes, it is. So which one? Oh, the one here, tucked in by the chimney there, to the yeah, right to the above the, the meter. Chimney. Yep. Yes. Right there. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So all the windows that we can see, except the casement, and you're not touching the bay window. Correct. Correct. Have any clad windows been looked at at all, or this is the one that you're proposing to us tonight? 
Yeah, this is the only one we're proposing tonight. Uh, we were, I kind of felt, you know, the, the existing window there now, it's, it's painted white, it's kind of shiny. Um, so it was a similar look with the uh, all vinyl with no grids with the uh, classic. Okay. And you see the name, it's pretty much the same as the neighbors. Well, you should know that the neighbors did that without approval. <laughs> oh, well, that's fantastic. <laughs> yep. I didn't know that. Does anyone else have any questions for the applicant? It, it does not include those two long cellar windows either, right? I mean, there's no plans no. to go. Okay. That's mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Anyone from the thank public? Thank you to speak in favor against tonight. Hearing none, we'll move on to the application for 6099, uh, the signs at various locations for Heritage Way. I see Mr. Woodworth there, he's muted. Good evening, it's Peter Gillespie here from the Weathersfield Planning and Economic Development Department. <clears throat> How is everyone tonight? Thank you, Sal. And as you noted, there, there are a number of our team members, uh, I think, joining us tonight. Um, I think Jim Woodworth is with us. Uh, Mr. Phil Lohman is with us. I think um, also some folks from Trinity Church, uh, Tina and Peter, uh, also on the team. Um, so we've got a good representation of the folks who worked on this project uh, joining us tonight. If you have specific questions or uh, comments for them, I'm sure they'd be happy to happy to jump in. Uh, but um, boiling this down, we're looking for permission for five new uh, interpretive signs to add to the Heritage uh, Walk project. Um, the first is a new uh, interpretive sign in front of Trinity Parish. That sign will mimic exactly um, the other granite and aluminum um, signs that we did in the uh, very first phase of this project. So we're working with the exact same contractor from Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, the posts will be six by six granite and the top will be an aluminum uh, frame. And then on top of that will be the sign panel. So they'll be exactly the same. Um, as, as the others that exist. The remaining four that we are looking to install will be a different st style. They will be the standard National Park Service. I guess they call it the T design. Um, those are also aluminum frames and a um, synthetic laminate panel on top. Uh, the first of those would be located in basically in front of Village Pizza. There's an island there. Um, we would uh, located in that particular island. I think you should have also received uh, some very simple uh, GIS maps that show the location of all of these, but uh, that first one would be in front of Village Pizza. The remaining three would be installed on the wood parcel, which is down uh, at the corner of Middletown Avenue and Maple. Um, if you're familiar with the Great Meadows Conservation Trust and the work that they did to acquire that property, uh, these would be basically uh, environmental uh, subject matter uh, about the preservation of the meadows and uh, elm, elm tree replanting and, and subject matter like that that goes with the, the wood parcel and the work that they've done uh, with, um, with that project. You should have also received, I think, a photograph of one of our existing uh, granite posts to give you the, the sense of the materials. Uh, I'm sure you're all pretty much familiar with those. And there's also a drawing that showed the uh, National Park Service design um, that went with uh, those other four uh, panels. Uh, this project is being done uh, through a grant from Connecticut Humanities. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have a whole bunch of partnering organizations. Uh, this is the National Park Service design that I was mentioning. Um, we've got other partnering or organizations, um, including Trinity Parish. Um, Mr. Phil Lohman volunteered some of his time. And we also have the Weathersfield Historical Society, which helped us uh, with the panels and the uh, the historical research that went into those panels. So we think these uh, five additional signs will add greatly to the value of the Heritage Walk project, uh, will benefit the shopkeepers as well, and will be beneficial to visitors as they come 
uh, to see the lovely old weathers field. So that's, this is the location of the uh, Trinity Parish uh, sign right on the side uh, behind their sidewalk and, and next to their uh, walkway. Mm -hmm. I think one of the wood parcel signs is probably outside of the historic district. These two, which will be up near the street uh, on the side of the uh, access driveway are clearly within the historic district. But the third, which is way off in the woods is probably uh, outside of the 200 uh, foot, uh, but we wanted to include it in the package just so you knew. So that's the third location, as you can see, uh, it's way back on the trail uh, out uh, in the Great Meadows. So. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the completeness of the package with the overview of where they're going. Um, it was very clear, you know, looking at it where these are going. I don't think that we've ever had maybe in distant times past as much walking traffic as we have in Old Weathersfield, certainly in my lifetime. Um, I've never seen it so busy. So it's really great that there's going to be some additional signage. Um, and as always, I, you know, the de design has worked in other locations and I'm sure it's going to work in these locations as well. I appreciate it. Certainly. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a great project. I, I just want to thank all the folks who volunteered on this. Uh, Weathersfield has a great uh, volunteer base and uh, the folks who've joined me on this call tonight have done uh, great work. And I just want to, for the record, thank them for uh, all of their participation in this project. It, it uh, will make it a much better project because of that. I couldn't agree more. And our thanks as well from the commission very much. Sure. If no one has anything else, are there any other questions from the commission members? Hearing none, are there any members of the public that wish to speak in favor or against or anyone on the team that would like to weigh in? Hearing none, thanks so much everyone for uh, coming in tonight. I very much appreciate it. Thank you. We'll move on to application 7,000, the application for 161 Main Street. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Bryce Hardy. I'm sorry, I'm getting a feedback. Hold on a second. Welcome back. Thank you. Is there someone else in the room with another device or do you have a phone and computer going? Yeah, it's probably me. Hold on one second. Well, anyway, okay. So uh, thank you for uh, hearing me. Uh, I'm Bryce Hardy, I'm 161 Main Street. That's where my business, I'm also a resident in town, uh, 297 Hartford Avenue. I'm still gonna, feel, hold on, I'm, this is gonna mess me. I'm just gonna leave that. Give me one second. All right, can, are we, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, I apologize for my technical difficulties. No worries. Um, so Bryce Hardy, 161 Main Street, and also a resident at 297 Hartford Avenue. Along the, my, uh, alongside me on the call is Joe Urso. He works for SLR, con, uh, he's my- SLR my Consulting, engineer. yep, I'm, I'm the engineer, Joe Urso. Thank you, Bryce. And um, so, we have had a pre-application uh, process with the HEC, so many of you are familiar with this project. Um, we're really excited to be here and to show you what we are proposing. And uh, so, so because we've kind of gone through this process with the um, commission, I'm gonna open it up to, to questions. Okay. Why don't you walk us through um, um, you've got a drawing here that's called material palette and it shows the gravel seating area, the wall with the fence topper and so on. Can you walk us through the different elements that are going to be used in the patio? Bryce, do you want me to bring it up or do you want to share screen? Um, Joe? I'll share screen. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of public interest based on the number of people that are here tonight. So I think it would be useful to go through all the elements, um, just tag on each one what you're proposing. Um, sure. 
Okay. Um, again, my name is Joe Urso from SLR Consulting. Um, we put this little design together with uh, the landscape architect team. Um, what we got here is um, uh, the main patio over here to the left of the building on Main Street. We've got a fence to uh, as a perimeter. So Bryce dropped off a bunch of samples. I believe he dropped off a fence sample, um, a brick pavers sample, which would be, you know, along the main patio as well as the uh, alternative dining area and the lower um, the lower fire pit area. Um, Bryce dropped off samples of the stone wall, the four foot stone wall um, to create uh, a separation from the parking lot, as well as the matching stone for the, um, the knee wall. That was one of the comments from last time you guys wanted to make sure that we had matching stone for the piers as well as the stone knee walls. Um, as far as material, um, Bryce, were there any other samples that you wanted to talk about? Um, no, I, I, I didn't drop anything off, else off uh, as far as materials. Those were the kind of the big, um, the big uh, topics in the last uh, conversation. So just to clarify, in this application, I don't see lighting. Is that right? In this application, we are letting you know about the the string lighting that is is that's on this plan the string lighting as well as um lighting in these bollards along the walkway you guys that was one of the comments we extended the uh the lighting for this the main walkway coming in main street is running along this line right here okay so but those, those are not in our package though are they i believe you received the uh, detail sheet that has this detail sheet on it of where um, they are okay okay so there's, there's lighting in that in that wall that just shines on the walkway yeah okay. so right here you see a light fixture that shines down um in the stone piers okay so there's no other lamps or other lighting aside from the string lights and then whatever is in the in uh, fixed inside correct pillar, those pillars so you're gonna have um right here i called out um stone knee wall right here if you can see my cursor on the left yep. provide a uh you know like a standard uh plug in three locations for power on the patio side of this knee wall and then you're gonna have a light in five locations pointing down on the grass side so I show approximate locations of these lights that are basically going to be shining down on a grass, um, like a lawn area, which will be then surrounded by uh, the decorative fence. And that's the aluminum fence that we do have a sample of that. Yes. And for now, for tonight's purposes, you are not proposing the pergola. No, the pergola has been um, something that we haven't been able to decide on. So as for tonight's purposes, we are not proposing the pergola. Okay. There were two Does the fire pit stones match the patio stones, the paper patio stones? That's correct. Indeed. That'll all be the same. Yep. We saw we had sample. Well, you gave us two samples of those, right? The two samples were just because, um, you know, really the I would really love to match the brick that's there. Um, they don't have that exact brick that you know that existing walkway. So we're trying to come as close as we can. Um, you know, I would love to before we decide on anything to bring it to the commission and and you know just make sure that that is exactly what the you know what you think is appropriate. Um, but those are, you know, from the um, company that we chose our samples from the best, you know, the, the thing that we thought was most appropriate for um, the pavers. So on top of that, too, I can't remember the, when you brought it to us 
uh, earlier in the year. You're not replacing the concrete sidewalk on Center Street, though. Is that accurate or? That's correct. Okay. Question about the brick pavers. There were two bricks that were submitted as the samples. Yes. Those, is it either or? Are you going to mix them or? No, it was one is definitely uh, much more uh, almost red. The other one has um, some color in it that almost that that we actually like better. That goes better with the 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 rock that would be in the in the walls. Okay. If we went to Kim's house, it was on the left. <laughs> I think probably got moved around. Yeah. It was the one with a little bit more yep. color color yep. contrast. Mm -hmm. So the so stone. So are you using the gravel or the P-stone? Where was that going to go? Uh, I think the P-stone originally, Joe, I think there oh. was P-stone in the fire pit area. Mm -hmm. um, that's actually going to be uh, an area we had, I'm sorry, we probably should have, I'm not sure if we should have taken that out or not, but we had talked about that being um, a more accessible area for handicap. So we were right. going to leave that um, a hard surface. So in the samples, there was uh, a framed in stone, um, sort of stone veneer. Right. Is that what the is that what the wall will be faced that's with? The, that's what the knee wall is going to be faced with. That's what the wall up against the parking lot will be faced with. Okay. Um, maybe Joe, we can go back to yeah. Um, right here. So the knee wall and that big wall against the parking lot, and, and, and also the pillars that will hold the fencing. Okay, and then there was that other kind of brick paver that, or a paver that was there that looks like a stackable sort of industrial piece. Where was that going to be used? Not sure what that was. Okay, that was. I think what I so the one in the frame was going to be on the the is the wall, the new okay. wall, and the pillars. I Got think it. the only other surface, the rocks are oh, the only other surface that we had was the pavers and then the fence huh oh there was something i'm sorry there was an indiana rock face gray and that was the sill that would be on the top of um the top of uh uh of the walls this sill right here i'm gonna stop sharing so you can where the heck oh not sure if you can see that. So right there, well, it's well, a really well, simple piece. It's what the company that uh, we're getting the material from suggested. It's very, very popular. They sell a ton of it. Um, pretty basic, more of a bluestone color. Uh, it's it's called Indiana Rock Face Gray. Kim, do you have that scanned? Let me bring it up. Hold on. Bryce, is that for the stone cap right here? Yes. So at the top of the wall, you're going to see a stone cap. That's on the wall by the parking lot, but you're going to have planters on the knee wall. You propose it, you're showing in the drawings. Or that also be capped. So the top of the knee wall will not have a cap. Um, but on the patio level, you'll have the um, the planter bed will be lower. So I guess you could see it a little bit better here. So you have the knee wall out here. The top of the stone will be visible. Non, no blue stone pier cap over here. It would just be stone. And then you have a um, the planter bed is over here, lower. So Joe, the cap so is there's actually... the stairs too. Those are stairs just north of that. They're... Yeah, those will be those, stone will, steps. I, those so will be stone three steps. Three steps up. And what about those? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, do you want me to bring up? I'm sorry, Joe. If you want to minimize, it. I'll share th what Bryce is asking. Is that what you're looking for, Bryce? 
Yes. So okay. that's the Joe, correct me if I'm wrong. That's going to be what's on top of the parking lot wall. And then what's on top of the, um, the cars. Yep. The All the piers get the top and the, the wall with a wall fence top will, will get that also. And then, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't actually have a, I don't have a material that I could be definitive on what we're going to have for that the stairway, the stairwell. It would be a very typical um, uh, gray stone, like a blue stone type of material. Um, Likely would match a pier cap, you know, yeah. the same type of color, I would think. You also show in the drawing the fences, it's squared off in some, and then in another, it has kind of a diagonal, the corner of uh, center and main. Yeah, so um, the reason is that, so before the, the I think on the, um, the actual plans, the um, blueprint plans, they are diagonal. It's my kind of, my goal to get a, a park bench there. Um, that's not something it's just something that I thought would be nice for, um, you know, for Main Street. And, but, I, you know, I, I, I don't, I guess I wouldn't have a preference if you wanted it square or if you wanted not to have that, that would, it doesn't, is it something that I have to have or, or not? Have. No, yeah, I was just wondering what you were proposing. Uh... The idea would be to soften that corner, not to have such a, a rigid edge. Yeah. But as my uh, wife tells me, I'm not a designer, so. Now, how, how does, uh, again, the drawing tour, I was just wondering, I couldn't really see where, like, I don't know if it's a service bar or you had that outdoor area. It now it looks like there's a table in the corner. Is that off the side? Is that gone as well, too? Or how? Is it all right if I share my screen again? Yes. Yeah. Let's take a look at this. So I was looking at this bottom corner right here, Bryce, on the latest version, we, we squared it off and we had a little park bench like that. So okay. I don't know if these are the That's latest fine. plans. That's fine for me. Zooming up to the old uh, bar service station. So this area over here is gonna be a service station um, somewhere, you know, uh, somewhere that we can, uh, you know, provide staff to be to uh, wrap food, to ha uh, have storage of glassware, um, uh, you know, plates, things that we can reset tables with. Do you have renderings as, that show us what that's gonna look like? What was that? Sure, it's gonna be brick pavers with a square uh, box that's gonna have storage behind it. It's gonna be, um, that will be the same kind of I don't have a, I don't have a material. It'll be the, the wall face, but I don't have a material for the top of that. So pretty much what you have there now is going away. Is that what you're saying? Or, or it's no, just it's gonna be going to be faced? It's, it's going to be replaced away. by that, this, that but be, it's going to be refaced. That area will be a service station. That, that box <laughs> you see is going to be where service ser servers have our, our supplies. No, we just want to know what it looks like because that's going to be visible too. Um, so we just want to hammer out as many of the details as we can. Yeah. Is, you um, know, we've got nice renderings of all the rest of the area, but the renderings we have for over there are just sort of a big blank space with a small box. Yep. Like this. Yeah, that doesn't give us really much idea of what's going to be over there. Yeah, um, so the front of that would be the same material as the walls. I would imagine it not being what the top of the, um, the, the uh, what do you call it, Joe? A sill, the sill of, the, of that, but it wouldn't be that. It would be a smoother surface, but I don't have that material, so I can definitely. Okay, so basically this would be an enlarged pier looking from where we are or from where the public is looking at this area, you would basically see a continuation of this back wall taking a turn of the same type of stone veneer material. And you'd have the stone cap up um, at four feet tall over here. The top of this um, box or service station would resemble a similar color, but it would be more up to for like a restaurant um, 
you know, for storage of plates or, or cups, you're not going to necessarily store plates or cups on top of this same type of stone um, cap because of, you know, it's, it's not, it's not as smooth. Just, yeah. Another detail you could get us. And then there's a big square that looks empty in front of that. What's going in that space. That's the existing stairway. And right then, here. Yeah. Where the little hand is. What's yeah. Going that's going to be a continuation of the uh, patio. Basically okay. you walk down the stairs and you take a hard turn over here. It's just, I know we, we show this brick pavers as different, um, hatches but it, it turns out these are all gonna it's gonna be a continuous type of brick paver floor but that's just going to be a server station there's not going to be outdoor bar space there no that'll be a service station okay that's really not that big of an area if you if you look at it Now you also show a gate over here on Center Street, the eight foot wide you know, service gate there. Are you gated here in the front too? Because um, that photo you just showed before, or we, or the previous. Uh, yeah, this thing's coming more off of a the typical restaurant. Typical render. Yeah. I guess it never really got updated with the new plan, but. Um, that gate on Center Street is for um, equipment access. Sure. The lawn, lawnmowers. Yep. And then don't you have to put the gate then on the uh, main street side? Would that be, cause you, you show a, a section coming off the house and then a, there'd be a gate there too. Do you have your fence cutting in here? And yeah, then, and there, uh, there is a gate there or yeah. I'm not. Right here yeah. is the other access. Access, gate. another access gate. Yeah, that one's showed it, yep. And then you got a third one in the back here. Now, how are you hanging the string lights? That's coming off the existing lighting the posts or you're putting in posts for those? Post sleeve in the uh, right here for the string oh, height. That would match the pergola height, which is uh, you know likely. We, we what would the post be made out of? What are the posts going to be made out of? Yeah. Per. Uh, I would. Uh, we haven't really locked in the string light post material or the pergola material. So, because hey, so you don't go ahead with the pergola, but you're going to put the string lights up. It looks like you have four posts over the existing uh, patio or the, the, new, the proposed patio. If you can go back one more. Yep. Or actually, there was one that you just showed that showed the the render. It, it, yeah, it had the per yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't go with the pergola potentially, but you're gonna have one, two, three, four posts or off the off the building. Right. And those Bryce, did you decide on I don't think we have the material for that, no. And otherwise the stairs are the same or are the railings changing on that? Oh, uh, there's uh, there's no change to the stairwell. Actually, this stair right here is going to be a flush condition. So as you see on the new plan, this is basically flush to the grass. Okay. So does it ramp up or does it incline? Fl flush. Okay. Well, if we were there, what's causing the stair in the back? Is there the difference is there in grade? grade. Okay. I didn't think there was that much of a difference in grade. I mean, it's only about, you know, it's not a lot, but this is the low point over here, this front side. Mm -hmm. But if I was to go back to the lights, I mean, I would assume it would be a, a black coated steel for the string lights something very typical that would match the um, perimeter fence color. Good question. Admittedly, we, we don't have a material for that, so I'm not gonna tell you exactly, um, but it would be a, a black coated steel that would- Well, I'm gonna to be honest with you. I mean, I think you've got a lot of the details covered and certainly 
the drawings are really good. Um, from my perspective, I think we're going to have a ton of public interest after we're done speaking. We're gonna have yeah, that's fine. It's all up to do with Normally, me. we would have, this would be a public meeting and we'd have all the drawings available for everyone to look at. Um, so my, you know, and maybe not everyone agrees with me, my inclination would be to hold it for two weeks and you can provide the last details of some of these things. Um, you know, that back bar, the light poles, the corner edging, um, it's not a lot of detail, but it would also give people a chance to go see the um, things in, in person and give Kim the opportunity to bring the samples that we all had the opportunity to see back to town hall for the public to see as well. Um, the other thing that we often ask for on a project of this scale is for you to put out some pins and rope so we can see exactly the size of it. I think that that might be helpful in this case to see how big the patio is relative to the building. Nothing fancy, you know. Those are things you've asked about the restaurants in town? Oh yeah, and other houses. We ask them to um, just string out how big it's gonna be. So bang a couple little wood posts into the ground, string a string around it to show us um, how big that patio is gonna be overall. Sure. I think it's then is it something where he could spray paint corners onto the grass or something? Of the... Absolutely. If that's either way, whatever is easier. Um, I don't want to interfere with the day-to-day -day operation either. Um, I think it's something if you, you know, you said you were going to do it on, you know, it's Tuesday, you're going to string it out on Thursday. You let Kim know when we all have Thursday and Friday to look at it, you pull it down before the weekend. Or if you did on a did it on a Monday or you know a Sunday night and you let us know to go on Monday, that yeah. doesn't interfere with any business. That would be and as you know, guys, I'll do anything you need me to do. Just for you know for safety, I wouldn't want you to if you do, you know, bang a couple posts into the ground. I wouldn't want them to be up for too long. And we all can drive by in a day's time. Where are the lawn chairs going? <laughs> What's your address? <laughs> oh, okay. I'll take you up on that. <laughs> um, it looks great. Um, do, does anyone else have any other questions? Um, hey, quick question about the string lights. Yeah. It, oh, I just am interested in what type of string lights are going up because I know a big concern with the neighbors is light pollution. And I don't know if they're going to be aiming down or low level LEDs that are adjustable. It would just be nice if we're going to do this again, revisit it. I'd like to see more specifics on the on the lighting because I know that's a large part of the concern nearby. That's all. Um, I want to see if I have the uh, string lights built into my <laughs> light. Um, no, we didn't put the string lights into it. Well, yeah, one of the handouts we got, they're there. <laughs> you have this sheet in there, hey, Chris? No, no uh, it was one of the uh, one of the specs that showed some of the uh, grade and, and the posts. And it, it, it's just, a, it looks like the Edison lights. So it's like any heavy duty commercial. Can I ask, ask the commission a question? Is. There they are. Yeah, I and mean, that's what was submitted. Can I ask the commission a question? Of course. Hey. Um, obviously, lighting uh, style is a, a, a concern with the commission. Um, what is it that you would like to see? I mean, you know, we're I've heard nothing but complaints about the lighting that we chose to begin with, especially the bollards that we are going to replace and get rid of after 18 months. Um, but you know, if string lights aren't the appropriate thing to use, you know, what we wanted to do is stay away from kind of the, the toppers of those columns with lights. Is that something you would rather see? I think that would just depend on the design. You have to see, actually, you have to see it in person too. It's hard to tell how much light is thrown. Chris, with all due yeah. respect, the, the commission is, what I'm asking is because they have this historical appropriateness of 
of what the town wants to see. Right. So we have to see those designs. I would say, you know, from my perspective, uh, you know, I see a lot of these string lights around the district. People use them on the front porches, people use them on the patios. I've seen them on um, other restaurant patios in the district. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I would just want to see the detail as to what you're what you're proposing and, and as as it's listed here. And I think I can make it a, a, a pretty you know. Yeah, I, I don't think that I'm opposed to them. I just want to know how they're going to be hung. Okay. And if, yeah. I mean, if you have other ideas for lighting, you know, we're certainly open to other things. You're absolutely right. It's going to be a concern of the neighbors. But they're not going to be on 24 hours. No, they're going to turn them off in the day. <laughs> I also imagine they're not going to get a lot of use in the winter when it's really cold out. Um, right. So for the lights, we only need to show what the pole type is. Um, and the string light here is, ha, provides sufficient information. Or are you going to want to go to a place that has these lights? No, um, I don't think or, we need to go to a place that has these lights. Or yeah. like, uh, Anything else that we need to provide for the specific action? I mean, what you light. submitted here, you know, yeah, what's that shrink for me? In my opinion, that is that is okay for me. Uh, the gate, you know, they give you the gauge. Everyone knows there's different gauge of these lights. How heavy are they, and right. how many in run? Yeah, I mean, it's very simple. A cut sheet on those. I have no problem with what you're even showing here, frankly. But, all right, I got to let the dog out. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so just a string light pole. Yeah, I, I'd be interested in, I'm sorry, Mark, I'd be interested in how many um, you would be using and, you know, the wattage, um, how bright are they going to be? I, I think that's the concern of the commission that, you know, how, how bright, so here's the 120 volts. So how many would you consider using since you're not using the pergola? How far back are they going to go now? Are they going to go where that was? So are, is that going to be a change? I, I do think it's a, um, as someone who lives in the district, it is a concern. Yeah, we want to, you know, if we're designing it for even like the neighbors. So we want this to be acceptable to just anybody that's living next door. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it seems like on this spec that it's 24 feet long with 12 lamps. So every two feet, you'll have a light right. with 120 volts. Um, I think we give the length of it on the plan before this, but. Yeah, just with the detail of the pole placement and that should help us kind of figure out what we're actually dealing with. Okay, sure. so the string light pole material and the server station. I had a quick question about the server station. Would it be acceptable to just continue this stone wall to hide anything behind this. If we were to have like a, you know, this is nine feet long. If we were to have a five foot long wall that just came out to here to hide the server table and storage and whatever. Well, that's um, exactly the question. What am I gonna see? That's exactly the question because- Yeah, so you'd see the continuation of this wall face stone veneer mm -hmm. to another one. So, I mean, we could definitely you know, sorry. This would be stone veneer and server station wall or something like that. Same height and everything, it would just be a continuation. So you would just want to see that obviously, just yeah. some sort of a. Yeah, cause yeah. that, I mean, on, on the plans as they currently are, that area is kind of blank. We don't know what that's going to look like. So we need to have what that's going to look like too. Got it. You know, it looks like there's a fair amount of greenery and then you've got the steps there, but um, obviously from the street on the center street side, 
I think you're going to have a fairly clear shot at it. So. Yes, if these tables are moved or something, they would clearly be able to see this. So if we were to show some sort of a wall or something that pointed out to it and said continuation of stone wall with stone veneer face, you know, something like that. The topper, yep. Uh, Joe, can you go back out a little bit to, um, I just want to comment in the center street side, if I can show it in, I don't know what detail I'm going to look at, but uh, just oh. remember that uh, from center street, you're looking at almost uh, two, two feet up and also um, greenery that's going to, that will, that will grow. Um, there won't be a dead, I mean, it my it's my goal to deaden the street from my guests so you know that those seats are that that wall is one foot from the patio pavers and two feet from the grass so from a from a car level you know you're looking and from walking you know you're you're looking at mostly greenery and a wall looking into the patio and that's you know that's on purpose right to soften that look from the street as well as this fence will be blocking this whole area and this pier and this pier. I mean, it, it is screened, I would say. I don't know if we would, we'll have to talk about if we even need to add a stone wall or a stone face. I mean, couldn't, would. uh? No, it doesn't necessarily have to be. I'm just saying we just need to know what it is going to be. Okay, okay, fair enough. Tablecloth. <laughs> Sorry. Figure out. Seriously. You know, if you tell me it's a wood build out painted gray, that's, you know, if that's what it is, that's what it is too. We just need to know what's going to be there. That's all. Understood. All right. Is what's next? Other questions? Let's make sure uh, public comment that we could just get addresses and where these people are from. Everyone Please. will have to identify themselves for the comments, yes. Thank you. Does anyone have any other questions about what we've got before us so far tonight? Hearing none. All right, we're gonna move on to uh, members of the public. Um, I'm going to let everyone know that we have a five minute limit per person. Please do keep in mind that the commission only regulates the appearance of items. You will undoubtedly have other concerns that will be more appropriately dress, addressed to other commissions or boards. Um, so uh, please make an effort to focus your concerns with the appearance of this because that is, that is the only thing we can act on. So Kim, if you want to start going through the people who are here for this for public comment one by one, that'd be great. Um, Karen Parker. Go. Go. Yes, oh, hi. Okay. This is Karen Parker. Um, my only question is- Wait a minute. If, you got to state your uh, address, please. Oh, 24 Center okay. Street. Perfect. Go right ahead. I'm just curious if the bar they're speaking of um, with the stone, is it the bar that's already permanently attached to the building? They're just gonna reface the bar that's already there? That's exactly the question I'm asking. What is it gonna look like there? And that's a detail they're gonna provide for us um, probably by the next time they come back. Okay, cause Jennifer, you just kept saying is, is what about the bar? There's already a functioning bar there. So it's just about the stonework? I don't know what it's going to look like. Um, based on the drawings I have in front of me, there's not enough detail to tell that. So I'm, I've asked them to bring those details for that area for the next meeting. So they'll give us, you know, the um, measurements and the materials and what it's going to look like. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have any other Matt, members? Matt Gove. Welcome. Name and Hello. address for the record. Yep, Matt Gove, 70 Main Street. Um, so I, I, I've been a, a resident of this town for almost 40 years and I've lived on Main Street now for about 16 years. Um, and there's been a noticeable change in the feel of Main Street over the past couple of years. And I just, um, 
Um, I attribute that to the, the good work put in by the um, Shopkeepers Association to draw people to Old Weathersfield. And about 18 months ago when Bryce opened his restaurant, um, I noticed that that extended the activity on Main Street and it brought, um, it continued to bring more people to Main Street. And also the thing that I noticed was that it, it became a gathering place, like a true gathering place, which we talk about a lot um, in Weathersfield with our friends and, and things like that. Um, as a business owner here in town, I appreciate all that he's done. And I also recognize the fact that, that he's put a lot of effort into making sure things look really nice for, for that restaurant. And I just want to um, say that I, I totally am in agreement with what he's doing with this patio area. I like the materials that he's chosen. And um, you know, I, I just, uh, I think it's really well thought out. And I just wanna um, say that I support that. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate your comments. Um, do we have other members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against tonight? You can hit that little raise your hand button and Kim will let you in. I don't see any, but we need to go back so we can always um, hear some more comments if somebody wants to send me a message in the chat option at the bottom. And then we needed to return to a past application, which was our doc system the application for 6095 at 310 Hartford Avenue. Is someone here for that now? I haven't heard anything. I haven't gotten any emails. I haven't seen anything. Um, do you want to address it as much as you can for, to, for tonight? I think we'll probably table it. They've got plenty of time. Um, okay. And if you have a hand up, uh, Norm. Oh, sorry, Mr. Cavoli here. You can unmute. Okay, can you hear me all? Yeah. Yes. yes. Your Norm name and address for the record, please. Yeah, Norm Cavoli from 14 Center Street. Uh, about that, I uh, will see that from my side yard continually. Uh, and I'm against anything that is done slipshod or cheap. But based on what I've seen, which HDC, the Planning and Zoning Commission, and what the Charles has done so far, I'm convinced it's, it's going to be done right. Uh, and long as it's done right, I think it'll be an asset to the town. And so I am in favor of it. I do have one question though. In the design, any thought or do anything available for sound absorbing or sound suppression material? No, it's outside, very difficult. But any patio stone, shrubbery location, is that anything possible for the outside of it? That might affect the looks. I think that that's a great question. Um, obviously, it's not something that we necessarily consider. I do think that um, there were me there are some measures that were taken, and I definitely think as a neighbor, it would be a great idea to talk to the property owner about those ideas as well. I don't know anything about sound absorbing um, patio material but I certainly think that uh, shrubs and fencing can help with that. Uh, but again, unfortunately, it's not something that we regulate. Unless it affects the looks of the location. You're exactly right. Yeah. And they do have, I know that they do have that back fence along the parking lot wall and there's um, various in the proposal. I don't know if you had an opportunity to see the entire proposal, which does include some landscaping and those things certainly help as well. Yep. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. I appreciate you coming in and your comments. As always, I don't want to run off too quickly without giving everyone a chance. If there's anybody else that would like to speak in favor or against. Okay, hearing none, I'm going to ask for a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting. I'll make a motion. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, wait, a, wait a second. <laughs> I have another hand, but I, it's Mr. Warner. Did you mean to put your hand up? Yes, I just have a real quick question before you move. That uh, You mentioned a phone number real quick in passing where we could call and find out what the 
uh, decisions are. It's Could me, you give that again, and then I will leave and not bother you anymore. <laughs> Mr. Warner, it's Kim Wolf. You, so it's you call me in the morning. Oh, that's okay. okay. Thank you much. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. All right. So we'll move on to the public meeting application. 6084, the application at 241 Middletown Avenue. If I can have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve with the following stipulations that the uh, rear door be choice or B, the front doors be choice E and the railing be choice D in white. I'll second for discussion. I was not present at the first meeting, but uh, you know what the homeowners come back with, I, I think is appropriate uh, for the style of the home for, you know, with the vinyl wrap already that's on the home. Um, it gets her the, uh, some of the light that she wanted in the back. And um, that's why I proposed it. And just to be clear, uh, Commissioner Lyons, you, were, uh, you said E on the railing style? No, uh, D on the rail. Uh, good call. Maybe I made a mistake there. Because I want to go with the aluminum. Yeah, yeah, not the vinyl. Yeah. Correct. I got to remove that. Right. It is E, which is the vinyl uh, railing, or excuse me, the aluminum railing. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with you on the aluminum railing. I think, um, I think that the this house well could have had a wrought iron railing. Um, I think that's probably for sure what was in the back. And this is a nice compromise that's unobtrusive, but is not going to be the shiny vinyl um, that I think would be really problematic in that location. Um, so I, I would, so it, it's the stipulations are B E E then. Is that, is that? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Can you Thank just you. go through that one more time? Door, which door? Uh, all right. So, in order, the back doors would be choice B. The front door would be choice E. And the railing would be choice E in, in white. So, to be clear, we've got two, there's two doors that are labeled B. It would be the original back door request right because she didn't give us a choice uh, and she didn't change the back door right right so it would be the original door choice um that's labeled number two back door replacement it's got the picture of the original door and then that's um nine light door that's the one you're referring to i got my acronyms all all messed up sorry so nope. i just want to make sure <laughs> i've got the right one yeah so you're right, it's backdoor replacement as originally proposed. Yes. So the stipulations then would be choice E for the front door and D for the railing, or E for the railing. Correct, E and the D. aluminum and white. Thank and you. may I have a second, Mark? Yes. Okay. Second. Um, so once again, I um, agree with the door choices. Um, I think we discussed it extensively. I think they're appropriate for this location and for the house as it currently stands with the changes that's already undergone over time. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to add? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Application 6087, the application for 183 Church Street. I'm gonna I'm gonna move to I hate to do it, table again. Um I don't think that the we have a real handle on whether he can do what was asked with regard to the grills, and they're just simply proposing grills between the glass as it stands. Um, can I have a second? Second. So before you move on to uh, voting on this, can we discuss it just a little bit? Oh yeah, I want to discuss it. Um, I think from what the contract, from what I understood the contractors say that yes, he can do 
simulated divided light. However, I suspect that when the homeowner gets the quote for that, the homeowner will not be happy because it seems like the budget is reasonably uh, tight there. Um, it's in the specs uh, as well that they, the manufacturer makes the SDLs. Yeah, it is. I just want to give her a chance to actually sure. oh, see yeah. what it's going to be because there was a little disconnect there. Oh, no doubt. Yep. The other thing that I will send to Kim again will be a list of other contractors that do window repair work. And if she can get those to the applicant, then the numbers that May, that she gets may be significantly different than what she got from by glass. Okay. All right. All those in favor to table say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Uh, application. 6095 310 Hartford Avenue. I'll make a motion to table. May I have a second? Uh, I think we skipped one, did we? Are you, are you skipping over Freeman's? Oh, I did skip Freeman's. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I withdraw that. Application 6091 59 Church Street. My apologies. I'll make a motion to prove as submitted. I'll second. And there's so many architecture features on this home that this chimney is not going to diminish uh, the value that this home presents in the district. I, I have no trouble with it. I, and I appreciate the picture of the a similar type um, home without that prominent chimney. A, again, so many architecture feature that sunburst pattern on the roof line there. I mean, it, great stuff on this house. I don't think it'd make a difference. I agree, Chris. So the multiple roof lines um, and angles on the house, it's got a ton of detail, the porch detail. Um, I want to be really, really clear for the record, though, that um, we generally uh, look very unfavorably on removal of chimneys. And we had a long discussion about chimney removal on a prominent house on Main Street on the Belden house. On that house, and, and I'd like to differentiate very clearly for the record, that on the Belden house, that fireplace is a main architectural feature and very prominent on that roof. And it speaks to what the interior of the house is too in the period of the house with the huge center chimney where all the rooms would have a fireplace inside. Um, I don't think that this very small relative the, to the proportions of the roof and the size of the building, um, functional chimney, it's not decorative. It was not meant to be decorative. I think it's loss, honestly, is not even gonna be noticed by most people. Um, so I, I don't think that, um, it, I think it's appropriate to remove it in this situation, but I think that every case would be looked at with similar scrutiny um, for the time, the period and the style of the building. It's not gonna be something that's routinely done. I can give one other example that I can think of off the top of my head on the corner of church and garden where a functional non-decorative, um, not a major architectural feature chimney was allowed to be removed. And, and that house also similarly has a lot of peaks, a lot of roof lines, a lot of detail on the moldings and you do not notice that it's gone. Also the history of failed attempts along with that too, to try and keep it. This wasn't the first choice it was others who were tried and failed to so yeah i think it's appropriate all those up, uh in favor of approval of the removal application approval is submitted say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed nay one nay the motion to approve as submitted uh is approved I return to application 6095, the application at 310 Hartford Avenue. I'll make a motion to table. Second. Second. Um, I'd like to just hear from them. It's our first private doc in recent era. Um, so I don't think there's probably any great hurry and hopefully we'll see them in two weeks. All those in favor of tabling say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, the motion carries. 
application 6096, the application for 530 Main Street. I'd like to make a motion with the stipulation that the wood, the window be wood exterior with a true divided yeah. light, true divided light or with a fix to the outside with a glass with a divider between the lights. I'll second. So I think that the homeowner, he doesn't want, he expressed an interest in not being tabled. I think that he also expressed a pretty strong interest in being willing to look at a wood window product. And I think he's gonna find something that really is helpful. And perhaps with Mr. Miglis's assistance, um, he may have some good ideas for him. I don't really have a problem with um, shortening the window if the light divisions are right. Um, and if he needs to come back for an amendment because he can't find a wood window, we could consider it by the next meeting. Also, I think, uh, unfortunately, the applicant's time frame is very limited. And I think even if he got approval for a Harvey Majesty window tonight, the chances of him getting, in, getting it in his hands, let alone installed by time, he's ready to move are problematic. Agreed. I think it's a really great opportunity um, to have a really great new renovation on this house over time, um, starting with this one window. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, the motion carries. Application 609865 North Brook Lane. I have 25 garden first. Oh my gosh, what is going on with me tonight? I apologize. 6097 25 Garden Street. Uh, may I have a motion, please? Make, Make a, a motion. motion. Go ahead, Mark. Make a motion to approve a submitted. I'll second that. All over the place. I think it's uh, uh, completely appropriate for what we've seen other roofing, roofs like this uh, for barns in the district that I think is completely appropriate. I agree, and I think I thank the applicant for coming in um, with the application very much. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Hearing none. The motion carries. Application six zero nine eight sixty five North Brook Lane. I'm going to make a motion to table. Okay. Second. So again, we're seeing a, a vinyl product perhaps without consideration of other available products. Um, I'd like to give the applicant a little more time, two weeks to see what else is offered there. So my concern with the applications that stands now, and I think we have a perfect example of it literally right next door, is the reduction of the window size, even though the uh, frames will be wrapped with whatever they wrap them in, uh, a reduction of three inches on the sides and four and a half inches on the overall height will make the window significantly smaller. And it will, the proportions which work now will change enough that the windows will look awkward in that house. Especially when put up against the remaining two double hung that will remain in the front of the house on the bay window. I think it's something that um, sometimes homeowners don't understand that these replacement windows really can uh, result in a huge loss of light. And if you're not doing all the windows, it really ends up looking a little lopsided. Even if you do all the windows, they'll look lopsided. <laughs> Point taken, classic. All those in favor of tabling say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion to table is approved. Application 6099. You, uh, am I able to talk or no? No, not at this time. So do I just wait for something to come in the mail? How does that work? Um, you can call tomorrow and talk to Kim at the building department. She'll be available for questions then. 
or you can stay until the end of the meeting. We do have another uh, portion for public comment if you'd like to hang around until we're done with the rest of the applicants. Okay. Application 6099, the application for Heritage Way signs. I have a motion. motion to approve. Go ahead, Chris. Motion to approve as submitted. Second. I, I think they're perfect Second. spots. Uh, one of them we won't even see, and the other two are, you know, on the at Woodland Patch. Um, yeah, I, I, I like them. I think you it's mentioned great. the foot traffic. Yeah. They do a great job. Um, yeah. You know, the location in front of um, Village Pizza, in front of the church, it all adds to uh, signage for um, our growing number of people walking around down in Weathersfield. And I greatly appreciate all the hard work of the people that got it here today. And I, I can't thank them enough for such a thorough application. That was really well done. As always. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Opposed, hearing none, the motion carries. Application 7000, the application for 161 Main Street. Make a motion to table. I'll second. Uh, um, yeah, a lot of great detail today. A uh, couple of things to clean up. Uh, but again, we had this was sim uh, given to us in a prior uh, preliminary hearing. So I, I, it's going to be a nice asset just get the details buttoned up and especially that bar corner. Uh, yeah, that, that was a little, not quite sure how that's gonna look, uh, but they'll, they'll get that to us at the next meeting. I agree. And I think, um, you know, the detail provided has been great. Um, I think having an opportunity because of the scale of the project for the public to be able to see the plans, you know, we're still working remotely, which puts us at a disadvantage. Normally we would have everything available for people to look at in person. There may be things that people would like to see. Um, two more weeks should, uh, should get the job done. All those in favor of tabling say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, the motion is tabled. Approval of the minutes from October 12. I think we were missing. I wasn't here. Mark and Chris. Mm -hmm. But we have enough to approve. We do, right, Linda? Yes, we do. Um, all those in favor, uh, I'll take a motion. Make a I'll motion to approve. <laughs> I'll second. Uh, with the usual thanks for the hard work of uh, Linda at making us sound better than we are and Kim for keeping us in line. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion is approved. Other business, um, other public comments. Um, um, if Dina wants to get back on, she can. Do we have any other members of the public here that would like to ask any questions or express any concerns? Hi. Oh, wait. Uh, sorry, okay. Bryce. Hang on. Dina. Go ahead. Your name is again for the record. Dina Dembizak, 65 North Brick Lane. Yes. Um, so uh, this is my first time, um, you know, having to do this. So now what are the next, Is can you guys give me some options of what you've approved in the past so that I can know what I'm looking at? I think you um, give Kim a call tomorrow in the morning and she'll give you some other ideas. So, okay, but do you guys don't know offhand like what you've approved or? Well, it, unfortunately every house is dealt with individually. And so your house cannot be compared to a house of another era or another style. And so I think your best bet is to give Kim a call tomorrow and she'll give you some ideas. Okay, and then I have to go through this again. You'll have, you won't have to do a new application necessarily. You just come in with whatever additional information you have in a couple weeks. Okay, because I was hoping to get it done before the winter, but you know, before. Two weeks. Okay, so two weeks I have to come back and then just come up with a different style. Is it the, what exactly was not approved? I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm confused. What was not approved? The vinyl window you proposed was not acted on. So the vine, so is it the vinyl or is it? Again, ma'am, 
we discussed it at some length during the meeting and you can call Kim tomorrow again and discuss it again. And you can also rewatch the meeting because everything's taped. Recorded. Okay. I, I have a question, another question. So sure. how, is it, how is it that every house on this street almost has vinyl windows that are, have been replaced and have not had to go through the historical district? We have had other applications from other homeowners on your street. There are times when people slip through the cracks and sometimes when someone like you comes in, it makes us go back to them and make them come in also. Okay, and then, so then you do have record of what windows were approved on this street? Yes. Oh yeah. So that's what I'm asking is what windows are approved? You can Dina, call Kim tomorrow and she can help you with that information. Dina, it's Kim. It takes some, I have to go through files and go and look for that information. It's not something that just pop, pops up. Okay, thank you. Thank and, you. And Bryce, did he want to pop back on? Bryce, I just wanted to apologize. I didn't realize you're on the commission now. So my comments earlier, disregard. Was that to Chris? Chris Hall, he was to yeah. me. <laughs> me, oh. So I apologize. Oh, don't worry. I just want because the drawings weren't the same as what was in the brochure. So I was more wanting a confirmation. It no, wasn't I just, for it was your a neutral. Comments were valid. I just didn't want to hear from the public when I was talking to the commission, but here you are. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. You missed the announcement. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, uh, are we? Going to be in person in two weeks, hopefully. Fingers crossed. We're going to talk about that shortly. Great. Well, thank you guys for everything. We'll uh, see you in a few weeks. Thank you. And on that note, um, we have received word from the town that um, they're going to be phasing back all the various commissions into in person. I'm going to take a little informal poll um, off camera and one by one to see where people stand about their comfort level. The important thing for us is that we are going to be in a new room, which is in the basement of town hall. I haven't seen it yet. I don't know how big it is. I hope it's on the window side, but I don't know if it is or is not. So um, I think if you're interested in any of those details, maybe a quick pass through town hall to take a look. I'm gonna take a look th this next week um, and we can make a decision as to whether we're ready to go back in person again. We do have some um, applications that I think are gonna draw some attention coming up in the upcoming weeks. Um, there is an application that I think may be in for our next meeting um, on Middletown and Mill, the house at the end of Mill Street on Middletown Avenue that I imagine is going to garner some attention. So we have to be mindful of the fact that we cannot keep members of the public from the meeting. We would welcome as many as would like to come to come. Um, so we need to decide if we think we're ready to be in person again. I think we're not regulating ma masks or vaccine status or anything like that. I don't know that for sure. So all of those things will play into all of your thoughts on how you feel about being in a room with lots of people again. Is, so we'll, there still, is there still a mask mandate for businesses in town? There is not. There was. Right? Lifted Friday. Lifted Friday. Correct. Okay. The past Friday, that's it. Yeah. Correct. So like I said, you know, obviously I think in our former space, we were pretty jammed. Right. Um, if we were in council chambers, I would say, hooray, let's vote right now and get back in person. Um, but because we are on the same night as other important meetings. So the police meeting room is not available? Uh... I don't know the answer to that. Um, I think that that's a great spot. And I know that um, PNZ has, or ZBA has used it in the past. I think that's much more spacious and maybe Maybe we end up with a hybrid where we're in person, but if we know we're going to have a big application, like we did with Comstocks, we moved it to the um, to, community pick, center, yeah. to the community center um, because we knew that we were going to have a lot of people there. Now, Jen, do you know if, if the basement, because with Kim can pull up 
the Google Maps and, you know, because a lot of times the photo, is, is that all going to be that I'm meeting room downstairs? Gonna, yeah, I'm told we're going to have the same setup that we had um, with the smart board or whatever they call it um, in the past upstairs that we'll have that downstairs too, which would be fantastic. Yeah. So ponder and I will be in touch. I think. What, what um, Kim, what any correspondence? Vasek's trying to talk. I'm That's sorry. Right. That's all right. Uh, You're fine with your microphone tonight. You're hard to hear. Well, I didn't have that much to say. Uh, one of the things to consider is, you know, the number of people that we have. I mean, we have eight commissioners. We have Linda, we have Kim, that's 10. And then if we have 10 applicants, that's we're up to at least 20 people. Plus their contractors, yeah. plus public. Yeah, so we're looking at a minimum, a room that can comfortably seat at least a minimum of 30 people. Right. And I don't know if that's what we have or not. <laughs> so. Okay. You can come in and see it. It's in the. It's where the health department used to be. They just put a new floor in, a new, like a, pergo floor on top of the carpet. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my God. Did they paint the wallpaper? That's too? ironic. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. And do we have windows, Kim? Can we open windows? There. There is a window, but it is not on the parking lot side. It's in like the courtyard where it kind of wraps in side. So it's not, not the desirable side. Are other commissions meeting in that room? Like, will they, who else will be using it? It's going to be used by um, the fire marshal is down there now, and the emergency operations center will be down there. Um, I'm not sure who else is using it. All right. But um, on a different note, um, it was brought up um, in the last week about, or the last two weeks about, um, some possible training. So if you're interested, let me know for HDC training. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know who's putting it together, but if you're interested in some additional training, please let me know. Um, and for correspondence, I'm just gonna keep moving along. And we had one um, letter that was not read into the record from uh, Larry Powers, 126 Main Street, um, in opposition to the plans for the patio at the Charles, um, and that will be on record for anyone to read. I apologize, Kim. I knew that there was a letter, but I didn't have it in my packet, or did I skip over it? No, um, it just came in this afternoon at like five o'clock, so. Oh, so he was past the deadline for submission then, probably. It's... Sort of. It's written oh. in, two, in two different times in two different places. So well, that is my bad right. and I will fix that. Right. For the record, there was a um, submission in opposition and we do have another meeting coming up. And so I can reiterate that at the next meeting that we missed that one letter since we haven't um, voted on it yet. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Sounds good. Is that it, Kim? I think so. You want some more? I mean, we could come up with more. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did. Uh, motion to adjourn. So make a motion. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you for your time, everyone. Aye. We'll see you. Thank in you. Time.